Hey guys, it's Norm from Tesla.com, and I'm here at CES 2014, along with Will on my right. And on my left, hey I have Ed Tang. You're the CEO of Avagon, and this is a really interesting new company. Uh, you guys are working on a prototype head-mounted display. We've seen a lot of these head-mounted displays in, in the past couple of years. We've tried a lot of them. Sony has one. But the technology you guys are using is very different. Uh, can you tell me a little about the technology and why Avagon's different? Sure. So what we're doing is really different than other display technologies. What we're bringing to the market is what's called a virtual retinal display. What that means is there's no screen at all, and the image is being projected directly on your retina. And the reason why we do that is we're trying to mimic your natural vision. How we see the world every day, we see objects that's reflected light, and things look so real and comfortable to us. And when you look at something like an LCD screen, you notice that after 30 minutes or an hour, you get a lot of eye fatigue. And so by giving your eyes the kind of light, an image that it's used to seeing, you suddenly get this amazingly realistic, uh, vivid, sharp image, even with all the content you have today. It's a whole new experience. All right, so the way I understand it is uh, traditional head-mounted displays, or even when you're looking at a computer screen, it is like a, a diode, a light emitted directly in your eyes. And most of the light we look at in normal world, and I'm looking at you, it's the yeah. sun bouncing through a window, right. it's being diffused, and then bouncing, and that's comforting because it's, your, your eyes isn't being strained. So how do you not have a screen inside your head-mounted display? So how the technology actually works is we're using a very low-powered LED, a three-color LED, almost like what's on the end of a keychain flashlight. We take that light, and we, we were able to condition it in a way that's far field focus, it's infinite focus, there's no coherence, and it's as close to natural light as possible. We create that light that we want, and then we bounce it off an array of two million micromirrors. And the, the image isn't really formed until it hits your eye. You know, as we know, it, nothing is really formed on a mirror, it's just reflecting the light. So we're using a brand new micromirror technology to, you, to, uh, to give you that reflection you, you said micromirrors. I'm thinking immediately DLP and yeah. Texas Instruments, yeah. like my old DLP rear projection TV yep. or, or front projecting, yep. you know, what they use in theaters. Yep. So is this similar technology? It is. So we're working the Texas Instruments. They're partner with us. But we're using, for the first time, a totally brand new DLP technology. For the first time in three decades, they're fundamentally changing their pixel structure. So now we have a more dense, more compact, higher resolution, lower power, lower cost micromirror chip. I want to look at this prototype right here, because this is one of the early prototypes you actually brought to our office a couple months ago. And you see the, the micromirror array is on this chip, basically. No, right it's, in the it's actually behind. These are ah, the okay. This is the controller for it. And the optical engine is actually behind this PCB board. So and, and the LED isn't in the front. It's, no, it's being it's routed. Design. Yeah. And so what's really great about this display is we're able to separate where we generate the light from where we modulate the light, where we control the light. And that's something fundamentally different than any other kind of missile panels. By separating it out, we can create the kind of light we want, have the space and distance we need to create that light, and then bounce it off the mirror into your eye. So, so it's a, a 1280 by 720 resolution for each eye? Is the, is the mirror resolution? That's, that's technically correct. Now, one of the really nice things that you'll notice when you're, you're seeing this image is that the resolution seems a lot higher than 720p. And the, there's no screen door. I mean, that's, that's the big difference between this and other glasses I've used. Yeah, it seems like an incredibly solid image. So a lot of people see that and they get an extremely high perceived resolution. It feels like 1080 or even higher because there's no screen door effects. One of the main reasons why that occurs is because the fill factor for our device is extremely high. It's around 90% for every single color. And we say something full factor, you're talking about, you know, on LCD, you have your RGB subpixel arrangement or RGBW subpixel arrangement, and, and the combination of those colors in the subpixel of an LED or LCD display is what makes a like, green or a different color. Here, you're basically filling that entire space with one color. Yeah, so if you actually zoom in on an LCD or an OLED array, you can see a pixel, right? And in that pixel, you have these RGB subpixels. And when they're all on, you look at the black area in that, in that pixel, and right now the fill factor for a, a full, color, full color OLED pixel or LCD pixel, it's maybe 60%, 70%. But if you look at the, the fill factor for a single color, it's incredibly low. So if I just showed you a green image, for example, mm -hmm. the fill factor is probably 20% or maybe even lower. And for what we're doing, we have around a 90% fill factor for every single color. So you get an incredibly full filled image with no screen door effects. Well, we can confirm that you're watching a movie right now that's 720p. Um, yeah, so I'm watching a, a 3D, I assume this is a 3D rip of like Life of Pi or something like that. I mean, it is a Life of Pi, but it's a 3D Blu-ray probably? Yeah, this is a 3D rip of, uh, I think you're watching Life of Pi, right? Okay. Um, so there's no screen door, but I'm not, just to be clear, I'm not getting like the Oculus effect where it fills my entire field of vision. What I'm seeing is the equivalent of like a projector that looks like it's 
you know, about, it looks like it's about that big, that far away from me, if I had to guess. But you can't tell that it's 720p? I, I mean, it, it, it's, that's an impossible thing to judge, right? It's like the megapixel stuff. It looks very clear compared to other 720p screens that I've used in the past. Someone asked about field of view yeah. and, and why you're not designing a, a technology to encompass your entire field of view. Yeah, so field of view is very interesting. We And we chose this 45 degree field of view because it's optimized for all the content that people have today, all the devices that they have today. You know, the market that we're looking at, we're not focused on the virtual reality market. We're focused on multimedia and general gaming markets, specifically for a mobile device. So there's a lot of amazing content right now that looks fantastic in our device. So all the movies you own, all the games you own today, whether or not it's on your PlayStation, your smartphone, your tablet, it's plug and play. You plug it in and you get this amazing visual experience out of our virtual retinal display technology that you can enjoy today. And so what Will is wearing right now is your next prototype. You called it an alpha. It looks much more polished than, than this, this early prototype you have here. And you guys are launching a Kickstarter, but that's not going to be the final version, right? So what, what are your targets for your final design? So what we have over here, this is an engineering prototype. And what this was is just a demonstration of the core technology, which you saw a few months ago. It's just to show people visually what something like a virtual retinal display can look like. So once we created this, this core technology, we started thinking, how do we move this into a product? How do we create something that people want to buy and use every day on the go with their phone at home? Um, and one of the big, big things that we figured out was people needed audio. And we give people this premium ex visual experience, but then you're missing that audio experience. And so there's a lot of other interesting products in the market. But we, we tried a lot of these things. You notice that you have different video glasses and head-mounted displays. And you have to wear your headphones with it and plug it in separately. And then it plugs into whatever device. Mm -hmm. and, you, and what we found is you have this, this, this cable mess. You know, two, three, four, five cables running out of these devices. It just didn't seem like an elegant solution if I was on a subway and wanted to watch Netflix. And so what's the goal? How many cables are you going to have coming out? One. The next product will have a single cable, plug-and-play, MHL, or HDMI into any device you have. And we moved into this form factor. And what you see here is what we call an alpha form factor. It's actually nowhere near close to what we, what we plan on shipping. Um, this one is still very bulky. It's, it's still a little heavy. And the adjustments, we're con continually improving the adjustments. But it gives people a concept of where we think is a great form factor for people to move forward. And one of the things that we looked at, and, and you can see over here that he has it in video mode, is that this is also a really high quality headphone. And it can be used in headphone mode. And when you want video, you simply rotate it down into video mode. It's, it's the Cyclops design, right, yeah. from X-Men. <laughs> right. Um, so your, uh, your, your final design is going to be lighter in the front, so it's going to be not as front heavy. Um, and then there's also accelerometers inside, so some head tracking. Yeah, so we're actually, the, the total volume of this device is shrinking down by almost 50% around the cans. The weight will drop by at least 30%, so it'll be a lot slimmer, a lot sleeker, a lot lighter. Uh, and yes, we are very interested in head tracking technologies. We showed a lot of demos with our engineering prototype with a wired head tracker, very low latency head tracking system. And in this prototype, we're moving toward wireless head tracking. We're going to have a very low latency, high performance Bluetooth 4 head tracker. We're hoping that developers will come on board and start developing head tracking applications for their mobile devices. So now when you plug into your phone, you can watch a 360 movie, a 360 video, and you can look around as if you're actually there. Or you can play your video game, like a driving game, and I can look around my environment as I'm driving or Call of Duty, right? You're mentioning mobile a lot, and so that's really the market you're going for. You're not, you, these, these aren't going to be a replacement for big screen TVs in the living room. Um, I mean, it's mobile gaming and, and maybe piece on PC gaming? We, we see it as the primary market as being mobile, uh, very mobile-centric for audio, video, and gaming. And at home, we don't expect it to replace your primary TV, but we think it could be a great secondary TV. You know, I have a wife and a little kid at home, and if my kid is, you know, hogging the TV watching cartoons, I can go sit in my lounge chair or lie in bed, plug it in Netflix or watch ESPN, plug it in my phone and watch it right there. Right. And you guys are launching Kickstarter, so what's your target price going to be for early adopters? So on January 22nd, what we're going to see is the next generation of this device, which is a lot slimmer and sleeker. And we're launching for our Kickstarter supporters at $4.99 on January 22nd. So make sure you, you check out our, our next releases. All right, well thank you so much, Ed, and uh, thanks for showing us the new, the Alpha design. It looks much improved than this engineering prototype. And it's, it's a fascinating technology. What do you think, Will? 
Um, I mean, I love the way the picture looks. It's really, really impressive. And the 3D is much more subtle than a lot of the stuff I've used. It's, it's um, more comparable to like a, a, a theater experience than say my active shutter glasses on my, on my home 3D TV. Very cool. We well, can't wait to see how this turns out. Thank you for uh, speaking with us. And we'll have more from CES 2014. Cool new products, Kickstarter products, prototypes, all on tested.com. We'll see you guys. Bye. Bye.